What's up, y'all? It's your boy JP. We got a 1993 Lexus SC400. Let's go ahead and take this radio out. First thing you want to do is pull down that shifter knob and you want to take out two screws, even though this car only had the one. Then we want to pull up that part and we want to unclip the two harnesses. Then we're going to have four Phillips head screws. You want to take those out. Then right below, you want to remove the pocket because we have two more Phillips hiding behind there and we need to take those out as well. Now, as soon as we take it out, now we have the outer side trim free, but you just want to use some light presser around because this is an older car. Then you want to disconnect the volume knob and the hazard light harnesses and the cigarette lighter, and then we're able to take that out. Dang, my knuckles are ashy. Next, we have four Phillips head screws on the outer side. We want to go ahead and take those out. Once we get done taking those out, you will notice that there are two more 10 millimeter bolts in the back that we have to take out before we can actually remove this radio out of the dash bezel. Now, with all the screws and bolts out of the brackets, we can go ahead and remove the radio just far enough to where we can reach behind it and pull out all of the wire harnesses. We're going to have three at the top for the AC. You're going to have about four or five on the back. This is the one with the Nakamichi system. Now down here at the bottom, there's a little harness holder. You got to get something flat to go in between those tabs to slide that out. And once we disconnect that, now we got so much room for activities. We're going to go ahead and get the dash kit together. This double end dash kit has this bars in the middle. So we want to go ahead and cut them and call me picky, but I don't want those tabs on us. So we're going to shave those off to make sure that everything's going to be smooth. Then we're going to open up the bag with the brackets. They're going to be labeled R and L for left and right. And it's also going to come with four screws but first what we have to do is take the ac module off the original by removing the four phillips two on each side once we pop that off we can set that aside and then we want to actually put together the dash kit making sure that the holes at the top of the dash kit stays at the top because on the bottom of the ac module there are some notches that have to go into those holes now once we line them up we're going to take the phillips that came out of the original and put them back in so that part can be secured and then we can actually insert our radio the radio that we're using is a kenwood dmx 9708s this is going to be a radio that i'm going to personally purchase myself it is a shallow den chassis it also comes with a cage and a trim plate seven inch touchscreen long nose radio three sets of four volt rca outputs four camera inputs serial satellite radio maestro ready all the bells and whistles that you would need and i think this is the high resolution player if i'm not mistaken either way we put two screws on the left two screws screws on the right so we got the radio secure and it looks good this 93 lexus sc400 did come with the factory nakamichi system so we're using the 708113 uh, audio integration harness now even though we're not going to be retaining the factory amplifier we do still need that same harness because we can catch our power ground ignition and our power antenna wire all from the same harness so i cut the wire harnesses to equal length we solder them use some marine grade heat shrink and since i know i'm going to be cleaning this wire harness up with some interior tester tape and zip ties i want to make sure that the remote wire going to the amplifiers is already done inside the harness now this is just my personal preference but i'm going to actually end up zip tying these rcas to the harness just because i don't like stuff hanging around when they don't have to if we were actually utilizing the nakamichi amp inside this lexus then those rcas will be going towards the radio and even though ain't nobody gonna see this i just wanted to be clean now i was going to use a six channel rca because that would have made things a whole lot easier but i needed a certain length and all the six channel rcas that i found were more around 17 feet and i didn't want to use 17 because this car is not that long so with the three sets of rcas that i got i had to find a way to kind of differentiate them so the sub we're going to leave alone the front i put a piece of tester tape on the higher part of the rca and on the rear we put one right in the middle i only did a half wrap on the rest of the rca just so we can keep the bundle together since i went with a short shorter length RCA in this SC400. I wanted to go the shortest route possible. So we're going to go from the radio down the console straight through the back. So we want to lift the bottom seat up, remove three bolts, and then we can take that top seat, lift it up, and then pull it right on out. Next, you're going to have these little pop clips at the bottom. We want to pull those up and that's going to give me a little bit more room to take my wire pulling tool and run it from the back through the console. Now that I have it in the console, I'm going to take my three RCAs and stagger them a little bit and tape them up to my wire pulling tool so they're not all jumbled up which makes it easier to pull all three sets of rcas and my remote plus the 
base knob wire all through the same way. And we're gonna move on to the power wire because once I get in the trunk, I wanna stay in the trunk. Dang, that's a nice engine. So what we have right here is a T-Spec mini a &L fuse holder and we're gonna mount right here on the top bolt of the battery and I figured this would be a nice spot to mount it. And I noticed wires going in between this hole and the fender on the driver's side. So I go up under the dash to see two grommets and I'm thinking that's the way that we're gonna be able to get in. So I grab my snap-on grommet tool. This is a tool that has a hole in the end of the handle and and the piercing tool which actually can fit a 8 gauge or 4 gauge wire now since we're running 0 gauge I don't need to actually run the wire through so we're going to use the smaller one and I want to make sure I don't touch any wire so we're going in an upward motion as we pierce through the grommet and then what do you know we cannot find that piercing tool right here so we're definitely going to have to take that fender out the only way to get through the driver's side grommet is to go through the fender so we're going to use my right angle tool to, to take out all the necessary 10 millimeter bolts enough to pull this fender back to where where we can actually see our grommet and if we look up we see that hole that's going in through the firewall so now that we know that we have our spot to go in i want to pre-drill some holes so we can mount that mini a &L fuse holder in place and then i want to actually measure out my zero gauge wire to see how i want it to flow because i want everything cut to the exact length now that we have that done we can dress this thing up using some ferrule some braided sleeving and we're going to finish it off with some of my very own logo printed heat shrink that is sold on jpsaudio.com all the wire in this amp install including the amp board will be dressed up the exact same way just so everything looks cohesive now this t-spec mini a &L fuse holder uses a torque screw which is something that i'm extremely happy about and now that that part's finished we can go ahead and install the first piece inside the vehicle now i'm not going to actually go ahead and mount it because it's going to be easier to dress up the other wire first install that on the other side of the fuse holder put the wire where i want the wire to actually go inside the vehicle now we can mount the fuse holder in place and we can zip tie our zero gauge right along the factory wiring you want to keep your wires along the factory wiring because the manufacturer is going to make sure that, that wire is away from heat and any type of moving parts now that we got through the firewall and it's 93 lexus i can remove my grommet tool away from my wire pulling tool and pull the zero gauge wire through the firewall grommet now after i get done zip tying along the factory wiring i do want to put some 3m strip caulk on here to kind of seal it to make sure no water or moisture gets inside the vehicle now surprisingly enough running zero gauge in this Lexus is extremely easy and there are grommets on both sides to actually get inside the trunk. Now since we are doing a four channel and a sub amp I'm gonna have to do a bypass at the back and it starts with taking off four 10 millimeter bolts for the six disc changer and we have three more 10 millimeter bolts holding that factory amplifier in place. Once we split down the harness I find four more guess what twisted pairs of wire and I'm pretty sure those are gonna be my speaker wire colors so I want to go ahead and test those. So I take this tone generator and we're going to probe the speaker harness and then now we can go inside the vehicle and find out where the speakers are actually located now i'm old school so i'm actually going to be writing these down so i don't forget and then once i have that done i can go ahead and spin some wires from my speed wire mimicking what the factory did with their speaker wires after that we want to cut the wires away from the harness we want to strip the wires back twist them together solder them pink shrink them using that marine gray heat shrink that i like to use and then wrap everything up with some test of tape now that this part is done stay tuned for the amp install video and if you like my short form content make sure you hit up jp the install guy for the long form content god bless you peace